Okay, I was about to start on um, a new scene for another video here, but I sat down at my uh, stamping desk here and was looking at these uh, stamp sketches from the uh, previous video. And uh, I really like these compositions, and I thought I might just want to take a couple minutes out here to uh, finish them off in a really simplistic way in terms of uh, keeping the uh, color scheme uh, very basic. And, uh, I don't know, take a look and see what they, uh, come out like with some, uh, a little bit more of a defined lighting scheme and overall finish, okay? I'm just going to start this off with the, uh, Memento London Fog gray, um, color. And this, um, what I call the previous videos, stamp sketches. Uh, this one is on a half sheet of paper, 5.5 um, inches by 8.5. And, and I'm kind of bringing this in from the sides. Memento inks, again, are fairly thick inks, very easy to even apply down like that and spread around, okay? It's a good consistency for a, for an initial ink if you're using this type of process. You know, in terms of layering it um, on your paper with a uh, some sort of uh, application technique, sponging technique, or whatnot. Okay, it spreads around really nicely. I'm gonna kind of keep that little swoosh in the sky, a little bit of a lighter area. Okay, now, I mean, there's no set formula for this. I mean, I can kind of do whatever I want in here. There's no right or wrong. I'm just kind of dragging my stylus tool across, to giving it these streaks, and kind of, I don't know, it just kind of develops some um, wherever those streaks tend to go. I mean, it's not like I'm going to put something down here and the streak is going to apply over here. I'm applying it down in a in somewhat of a controlled fashion, but um, I don't know, just depending on how much ink is on here and what swipe gets put down. I didn't plan for that little area of light up there, but you know, just applied it down, kind of like that movement going through there, so I'll just leave it as is. You know, I can darken it up if I still want to, or whatever, I can completely eradicate, you know, all uh, remains of the white of the paper if I want to. Um, if I leave those clouds up there, then I'm guessing that this scene would probably be, you know, sometime in, in the day, if I completely take it out, it could be moving, you know, this thing could kind of go into more of a nighttime type of a uh, uh, scene. Okay, and applying some inks down on these trees, if I want those trees, some of, the, some of the trees to be somewhat illuminated, then just don't tone them out. Like back in here, if I want to create a little bit of separation between some of the trees, then why not just apply a little bit of ink, you know, on, I don't know, let's say, we'll create this little oscillation, you know, a little dark, light, dark type of tree, okay? Um, with this ink here, this gray ink is fairly light, okay? Even when applied in its full saturation, um, so, you know, it's not a big, huge, uh, commitment to that value in terms of, uh, the grayscale being used on here. Okay. Um, we'll canoe us down here. I think, uh, I wanted to kind of create a spotlight, spot lit, lighted, I don't know, whatever. Uh, effect, you know, by having a, kind of a source of light up here and illuminating 
the subject matter in this case. It's the uh, little figure in the water in the canoe here. So if I want to illuminate that figure, what you'd have to do is you have to make the area around it darker, okay? So we're not taking, you know, lights or something like that and aiming it down there, but you're just uh, representing light through the use of shade. So, you know, white pieces of paper. The tool that we have to use is contrast. So, again, I'm not looking at this scene saying, wait a minute, if I was outside, and it's light there, then it would probably be light over here. I don't think that way. I just, you know, it's more of like um, an approach, like uh, stage lighting or something like that, um, where you're in control of as many different spotlights or colored lights or whatever as you want. You know, so you can bring emphasis to your, um, you know, in this case, a staged scene. Alright, get a good saturation down. Even if you've already toned in a certain area, okay? Get a good saturation of it down. Put another one or two layers down, I would say, to get the card nice and for lack of a better word, kind of lubricated for other colors to easily spread on top of it, okay? So anyways, um, like I said, I, I kind of like the compositions here, you know, when I took a look at them, I thought, now oh, why not finish them off? Slowly bring in a little bit more drama to the scene in terms of lighting. Um, Let's just go straight to black. Hold on. Let me switch here. Okay, here's another one. I mean, it's real similar, right? I thought what I'd do is I would kind of approach the first couple layers of ink, um, you know, in a similar fashion, but let's take the last, um, or let's take the scenes in two different directions, okay, in terms of, uh, hue, at least. I thought I'd do maybe a, one cool scene and one warm scene or something like that. Okay, same way. Um, just applying tones. The scene right here, by the way, is uh, four and a quarter by five and a half quarter page uh, scene. In some videos, I think, coming up. I'm, I'm just going to work kind of in, I don't know. I think a lot of people work in the quarter page format, four by sixes or whatever, or they do half pages. I mean, there's different kind of card, traditional card sizes too, but um, I think I, I want to work in more like a square format or something like that, do some different um, dimensions at least. There's all kinds of different ways you can use stamps and, you know, as far as like stamp scape stamps, I mean, you can do them on glossy paper, use all kinds of different media, you know, to create all kinds of different looks. Um, you can build scenes, you can use these, you know, branches or something like that very sparingly to create some kind of, you know, real graphic look very simplistic and elegant if you use it by itself on colored paper or something like that with the word stamp. I'm talking about that branch right there. But, you know, doing all those different types of things gives your projects different looks, but one of the easiest things you can do too is you can just change the format. You can do them squares, you can do them on kind of a elongated kind of a movie screen format if you want to, kind of a panoramic type of look. I mean, just simple things like that really give your um, cards or scenes, you know, uh, a different twist. Okay. 
can tell this uh, this ink. Uh, that first ink, that memento, is already really setting up quickly. Um, it's drying very fast. Um, uh, I hope I can get through this black ink very quickly, or get this laid down, because it's kind of grabbing it a little bit more. If you ever find that happens and um, your inks aren't spreading as nicely or with ease, just go back and it doesn't matter if you put a darker tone over the top of it, just go back in with the the lighter tone and just apply it right over the top again and then go back to your darker tones, okay? And I'm roughly applying this in some of the areas that I've already applied the lighter tone. I might use this a little bit more sparingly, though. Maybe I don't go into some of the lightest of areas with this uh, black ink. By the way, this is a Marvy black. Um, you can use any other type of black. Dye base, preferably. Not something like, don't put a base layer of memento down, then you know, try to go for this technique with like an alcohol ink or something like that, or a pigment ink, you know, as a second layer. Um, I don't know. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but it would have a different look to it. So if you're going for this look, uh, you know, stick with the dye base. It's... Anyway, um, coming along, I mean, this is a like I said, this is a half page scene and working somewhat in a kind of a monochromatic palette here in terms of just uh, trying to achieve a lot of different types of uh, variations of gray. I like to try to go for a uh, kind of a full value scale going from very lights to, uh, to black. Most of, my, most of the time. Um, even if black is just in kind of a very small area, I like to have it on there. I like to have that range. I think when I was, uh, when I was younger, I was kind of more into like super high contrast you know, really dark and really light without very much of a mid-tone uh, range in just all kinds of different work, photography, and I like that drama in it, but I find that uh, uh, the mid-tones are uh, probably more important to me than back then. separation between water and the foreground uh, sedge cluster uh, image. Okay, so just applying it down. some more of that memento down um, 
because I think this is probably really dry, but since this is a quarter page scene and I just want to do this in a kind of a really quick fashion, I'm not going to bother um, going back in and uh, reapplying some of that memento ink. I just want to show, uh, show you how fast uh, kind of the finish work can come about, you know, in terms of uh, applying uh, some tones on the top for uh, kind of finishing off a scene. Getting that uh, lighting scheme down. always working from the outside edge in. I mean, most of the time I, you know, when I'm working on these scenes, I, I don't have it upright. I'm not working it upright because I'm kind of applying the inks on the edges like that and I'm pulling in so I turn my card accordingly, you know, to get that motion down of that stroke. Okay. Um, Darker on the edges, right? Lighter in the middle. That little lone figure in the water. I mean, we don't have the benefit of um, hue playing a part, you know? I mean, there's a little bit of a temperature to this gray. I think it, well, I don't know. Again, I was going to say it looked a little blue, but there might have been some blue on this tip when I was using it on this one. Especially for that. This one looks more just straight gray, but... I mean, what I was getting at is we don't have the benefit of hue, you know, to play, uh, you know, to kind of impart some sort of uh, emotional quality to the scene, but um, sometimes just uh, black and white uh, kind of gives your scene kind of a you know, a different emotional quality to it. Same thing in photography or, uh, you know, other types of artwork. Um, but you can really achieve quite a bit in terms of uh, kind of whatever statement you're trying to make uh, in your scene. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, what kind of mood do you want to create? Um, in a scene, do you want there to be like some high drama, or do you want it to be more kind of tranquil? You know, do you want it to seem more vibrant and alive, or whatever? But anyways, uh, using your grayscale in there and kind of really manipulating the uh, value, you know, in terms of light and dark, can uh, can do that for you. And as you can see, I mean, I, you know, these two scenes are pretty fully realized in terms of, uh, you know, your lighting scheme. And uh, kind of just the overall finish of a, of a piece. But that being said, let's, let's just create a little bit of a, a contrast. Uh, between these two pieces in terms of temperature. Um, okay, let's just leave it at that. Um, okay, let's go with, uh, I was thinking about, as I was doing this, I thought, okay, I'll just figure it out as I go along. I, I think I'm gonna make this one kind of a, a warmer scene. And let's make this one a little bit uh, no, let's switch it. Let's make this one uh, a little bit of a warmer look. And this one, let's go with a cooler look, okay? Um, now, when I say that, um, if this one's gonna be cool, I'm not gonna use something like a blue like this, like a, a navy blue. I mean, in theory, I guess you could, but I don't want that 
value of blue to uh, to be used in here. I want something very light, all right, uh, to start off with, okay? So let's go with the um, Adirondack Lights Aqua. It's a shadow stamping ink, very light in value, and um, okay, I need a new tip. Um, just pop off your tips if you're using stylus tools. Pop a new one on. The reason why I'm popping a new one on is I'm looking over my tips here and I don't think I have any like really clean blue tips. Um, okay, I need some rink or fluid on there. Anyone old enough to remember um, photo tinting? It's when you take like a black and white photo and it used to be this kit of these little inks and um, they're all very light. You can color like black and white photography or just use it for some sort of a you know, effect, you know, there's a, someone was wearing a, I don't know, a rose or something like that, you know, in a black and white photo, then you can just color in the rose these days. It's all, you can just do everything digitally, but, um, um, this is probably something kind of more akin to that, you know, that old style of, uh, photo tinting. I'm just going in with a very light color of ink and tinting the photo. It's not influencing, greatly influencing the, uh, the overall values of, uh, the objects that I'm, uh, applying it on because it's so light. Okay. Just a little tint in here, a touch of temperature, you know, that we're adding to the uh, to the composition. Still want that little guy to stand out a little bit, so I'll leave him as is. Um, go with a pick out some sort of light blue. This one's a salvia blue. Um, Marvy. Okay. Just apply it down. I have a lot of the Adirondack Lights Aqua in this tip here, so it's really spreading around nicely. I'm not making a full jump straight into the Salvia Blue because the Salvia Blue ink on here is mixing with the, uh, you know, the previous ink, so. Okay, a little bit of temperature in there, right? You kind of, I don't know, it, sometimes when I apply the color on there, it looks just, it looks more full to me, even though that this is, you know, pretty monochromatic in terms of a cool gray color scheme. Okay, so there we have that one. Now let's go to a warmer finish for this one. Although this is the one that looks a little bit more blue, uh, inherently. Uh, because of, uh, what are, whatever color was on the tip of my, uh, stylus tool when I started using it. Um, let me see. Let's go with the Peach Bellini. Adirondack Lights Peach Bellini. Seashells Peach Bellini is still called Adirondack Lights Peach Bellini. The other colors, they change the names. Seashells Ocean Aqua is now Adirondack Lights Aqua, kind of removing it from the, uh, you know, the, uh, I don't know, whatever, beach, you know, ocean type of theme. All right, so Peach Bellini. Let's see if I, yeah, plenty of ink on there. Um, sometimes I just like to, you know, use the straight reinker fluid. Okay, same thing. Just applying this peach bellini kind of over the whole thing. Can you see the difference here between here and down here? Uh, a little bit of a warm. 
armored look. Okay. I don't know, you know, if uh, <laughs> I think you know, temperature really plays a big part in uh, kind of the overall kind of emotional um, feel, the emotional feel of a piece of work. up a little bit still retaining some of the some of the kind of the whites of the page not as much though but um, some of it okay let's go to the pale orange if you have some kind of tan or orangish tone, whatever color, you know, other brands, you know, go ahead and use those. This one here doesn't have too much of a, it's not too yellowy, oh, even though yellow is a component of a pale orange. Um, it's just a little step up in terms of value from uh, the peach bellini. It's a little bit darker. Uh, mix and match though, I mean, if you want to try different things, you don't have to go with just this one look. If you want to do some, you know, kind of tans, oranges, orangish, orangish colors, browns look really good. Um, some distressings over the top of that monochromatic would look pretty good too. You know, these are colors that are supposed to, you know, they're specifically supposed to look kind of aged, right? So you get a lot of nice, rich um, brown tones in that uh, line. That would look uh, good. Uh, speaking of that, why don't we try that? Um, let me see. Um, okay. Antique linen. I get confused sometimes um, in terms of, uh, I don't know this line as well, but uh, I tend to forget which one's kind of going to be darker. Here's antique linen. Antique linen looks fairly light. I think I need to go to, uh, let me see if I have it. Here's a tea dye. Um, but I think one of the things I started saying I can't remember if I said it or not, or if I just thought about saying it, was you can mix and match. You don't have to just go with, you know, like these brown tones. If you want to try some green in it or something like that, you know, by all means, give it a try. Maybe I will. I saw this uh, peel paint that looks like a good green to use on here. Huh? Or maybe on this one. Maybe I'll try that. I'll try to add some of that in there. Okay, let's go to something darker. I think the walnut stain was a little bit darker. The previous one was tea dye, if I didn't mention that. Okay, let's go to this uh, walnut stain. Okay, a little bit more of a brownish uh, tinge to this one, of course. Yeah, being kind of walnut, walnut hue. Okay, looks pretty good. Gives it a different feel, huh? It's really warming it up with walnut and without. It's kind of giving it more of a... I mean, when it was kind of monochromatic, I had... I, I think it was... kind of ambiguous in terms of kind of what time of day or, you know, it, it might be, but this seems to me like it's 
creating more of a dusk or dawn type of a feel to it, to me at least. Changing the uh, really changing the spirit of the uh, scene, isn't it? It's kind of like almost like you're starting off with something and going into it, and you know the actual time of day is is changing. It's one of the fun things about stamping, you know. Uh, kind of the. Uh, scenes can evolve right before your eyes, and I don't know, the spirit of this one really changed dramatically uh, for me just with that one ink. Peach Bellini and uh, like the pale orange, you know, they played a part, but uh, it was really through that walnut stain that that one changed. Um, I don't know, I like it. I, I don't think it uh, necessarily changed it for the better I liked it before too but it certainly changed it you know into something different right okay now here's the difference between this one right here okay that one but let's do something let's uh, let's play around with this a little bit more okay Let's try this peeled paint. Um, I'm thinking. Um, this peeled, well, here, test it out first. Hmm, it's kind of an olivey type of uh, green, isn't it? Let's see what it looks like. Can I just bring it in from the edge there? I knew it was going to warm it up, but I, you know, I didn't know to what extent. I think it looks interesting. It kind of looks funny though if you just kind of put it in the water, you know, without bringing it into the uh, the other imagery, though, doesn't it? So, I think we've committed to this, uh, to this, to this hue and, uh, temperature, so let's go ahead and bring it in. Why not? Interesting. All right, let's uh, let's run with this. <laughs> let's introduce some uh, some even brighter tones. Why don't we do this? Uh, let's try to take it even uh, further. Let's create kind of this kind of this jeweled emerald. Uh, glowing, I guess, um, color scheme. Let's, let's do this. Let's maybe put it in the uh, 
sky. So even though this is light, that's only the only place you can really see the light greens. Be sure and add those lighter tones to your darker areas to kind of bring a, a richness and a saturation to those darker tones like that. Okay, it looks more rich, richer in these corners right here by having that lighter tone uh, kind of in the mix in those areas. Okay. All right. Kind of here's dark green. The previous green I used was uh, light green, Marvy green, number 11. Okay, this is a really bright not light, but bright green that I'm using right now. It's just a straight number four green. Um, it's kind of the green that's in every lineup of uh, stamp pad lines. And it's just a basic green. It'd be like a green that you'd use for Chris, uh, Christmas colors or something like that. If you're using a, doing a red and green theme. All right, well, this really, really changed um, from my initial concept to the final result. As happened so many times anyways. This one really got quite vibrant, um, you know, in terms of the uh, saturations. Um, but all started out from those little stamp sketches. Bringing a little bit of uh, highlighting into the mix with a white gel pen. Put your specular light into the water. Little glistening little ripples or the surface of the water. And how about some little highlights and some uh, trees. There it is in the bushes. A little bit too much right there. You just kind of rub one of them out. Did you see that? That's I just rubbed out some down there. There was too much. Okay. All right. That's that. I think, and that's enough. I guess. Uh, actually, as I say that, running through my head, I'm thinking, eh, I can use a little bit of tan or something like that over those trees. And maybe I'll add that in there, but I didn't want to make this video really long. I just wanted to finish off a couple of these scenes right here. So, kind of quick um, lighting and shading exercises here, utilizing the uh, stamp sketches that were created in the previous video and uh, what I thought would be a 15 10 minute video has turned into practically 40 right here but I get carried away with everything so uh, especially when it comes to stamping so anyways um, two different looks here very similar compositions um, grayscale monochromatic uh, foundational coats and uh, just building them up using some different tones. You don't have to go monochromatic. I mean, we can bring in some warmer tones up there. You can do blues or something like that down there if you want to, you know, so you can just kind of experiment around. But getting that kind of monochromatic uh, foundation uh, in terms of lighting can be something that's a really quick exercise and uh, um, fun to do 
because some people like the monochromatic look, uh, you know, in terms of grayscale, um, kind of as a little bit of a change up to uh, their color work too. And I think you would see that uh, even if you're not so much into kind of a grayscale look, you know, something void of temperature in terms of uh, cool and warm, warm and cool, um, doing that is a really great exercise for uh, your color work when you get back into it, because when you're doing color, sometimes people are thinking about hue, but sometimes they don't concentrate as much on value uh, in terms of light and dark, but when you're only working with grayscale, grays and blacks, or just even using just the black to achieve all the grayscales like I've done in previous videos, um, when you go back into your color work, you'll find that uh, I think uh, well, the awareness of uh, value and the importance of value in color work uh, is kind of on your mind a little bit more because it gets ingrained by the use of uh, going with such a kind of limited palette range. So anyways, uh, fun stuff and uh, thanks for watching the video and uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, finishing off of these uh, two scenes.